Hey everyone, in today's lecture, we're going to take a look at deploying a Nest.js application using Railway. Now, this is my preferred approach to deploy a Nest.js or really any Node.js application today, and that's because Railway makes it super easy to get your application deployed and configure everything you need to be able to run in production. The developer experience is extremely nice. We get things like logs, automatic deployments, and a great visual UI to actually build out our production deployment. The best part is, is we can actually get our application deployed with a few commands on the CLI in less than 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and jump right in to see how we can do this. Now, before we jump in, I want to let you know that the full version of this lecture is available on my site, which I'll leave a link to below. In the full version of the lecture, we go deeper and dive into adding a Postgres database to our application deployed inside of Railway, as well as Dockerizing it, building and deploying our own custom Docker image. So if this sounds interesting to you and you want to check out the full lecture, check out my site below. You'll also get access to hundreds of hours of exclusive developer content to further your skills in full stack development it also includes access to all four of my best-selling Udemy courses to help teach you to use Nest.js microservices to build real-world production grade applications so let's go ahead and jump right into this lecture to learn how you can deploy Nest.js on Railway in less than 10 minutes to get started make sure you sign up for a Railway account it's not going to cost you anything to follow along with this lecture since you get a $5 credit to sign up and start using it, which we're going to stay under in this lecture. So make sure you go to railway.com and go ahead and authenticate with GitHub. So after connecting your GitHub account and creating a Railway account, you should be brought to the central dashboard for Railway. Now we're going to go ahead and use the Railway CLI to actually initialize our new project once we have our Nest.js application up and running. So let's go ahead and get started by heading to our CLI where we'll initialize our Nest.js app and create a Railway app for it. In order to initialize our project, we'll use the Nest CLI to get started. You can make sure you have it installed with npm install at Nest.js slash CLI at latest. And then we'll use it to create a new Nest application by using Nest new. And I'll call this Nest.js Railway. Then we'll go ahead and use pnpm package manager to take advantage of the fast caching it offers. Feel free to use whichever package manager you'd like. Now let's go ahead and let our project finish installing. So once that's complete, we can cd into it. And I'll go ahead and open up in my code editor. So here we have the starting Nest.js application where if we look inside of the main TS, we can see we're bootstrapping our application by checking for the process in the env.port environment variable or listening on port 3000 here. So we're going to bind this HTTP server to the given port by default port 3000. And that allows us to expose our application over HTTP. And we're creating our Nest application here using the Nest factory. We pass in the root app module where we have our controller defined and a starting app service. So this app controller is where we actually expose our HTTP traffic with our single starting get route here, which is a simple get hello that's going to return get hello from the app service. So we've injected the app service in here and we're returning a hello world string. So we should have this single get route exposed from the Nest.js HTTP server. And we can go ahead and test this all out by try running the server locally. So we can see in our package JSON, we have our starting scripts to actually start up the Nest.js development server with hot reload. And we also have some other scripts to build the Nest server and start it in production mode. So let's go ahead and start up the development server back in the terminal. I'll run p npm start dev. This will go ahead and compile our server and start it up. Now you can see here our application is started and we're exposing our single get route. Back in my browser here, I've navigated to localhost 3000, which is where our server is exposed under. And we can see this hello world string that got sent back from our server. So this is running locally, great. So now we have this Nest.js application running locally. Let's see how easy it is to hook it up with Railway and actually deploy it. To start, we'll go ahead and stop our server and set up the Railway CLI, which we'll need to actually authenticate with Railway and make requests against their API. To do this, I'll go ahead and npm install globally the railway cli at railway slash cli so now we have the railway cli available we should be able to now run railway login 
and this is going to go ahead and prompt us to open our browser to authenticate with the railway account we've already set up so let's go ahead and continue so i just went ahead and completed the authentication process and now i am logged into railway from the cli now we can go ahead and deploy our application simply by running railway init in the root of our nest.js project this is going to go ahead and ask us to generate a name for it i'll go ahead and call this nest.js railway once again and you can see it's gone ahead and created this project for us. So go ahead and click on this link to visit the new railway project inside of the dashboard. So now you can see here I've opened up the railway project. We can see the name up here. And we have an empty project right now with no services added. Let's go ahead and now add our Nest.js service. To do this, all we have to do is run railway up. And this is going to go ahead and actually start building our application automatically without any configuration. Railway is automatically able to detect our package JSON and load in the respective build script to build our application inside of a dedicated Docker container here. And it even knows that we're running in pnpm, so it's going to use pnpm to install our dependencies first and then actually execute our build script. So the first time it's execute, it may take a bit of time for the build environment to initialize, Afterwards, it will use cache and be much faster. So you can see here, it's installing all the packages it needs to actually run our build. It's then run pnpm install to get our dependencies here. And we can see it ran the pnpm run build command from our package JSON, which actually builds our Nest application and compiles our code to JavaScript that we then serve using the nest start command, which is the default start command we have from the root. And you can see here, it has now actually started up the Nest.js application inside of a railway container running in production, which is amazing. We did this all with a simple one line command and railway was able to configure everything for us automatically. Now let's go ahead and further configure our project to fine tune it and actually expose it over the internet. Well, to start, we can see back in the dashboard, we can actually see the railway deployment here in the activity panel. We can click on the actual Nest.js railway and see the deployment. And here we can see the actual deploy logs, which are the logs from our running application inside of production now. So we can see the Nest application successfully starts. We can also see the build logs from the entire build. So we can debug any failures and we can see further details about this application here. So if we click out of this and look at the underlying application. We can also see we have a list of variables that we can supply to our service here. Right now we don't have any. We can also see metrics from the running container. So this is already extremely useful because we have this observability on our application, seeing our application CPU and memory usage as well as network IO, all without us having to configure anything. Finally, we can click under the settings tab here, and this is where we can further fine tune our application and implement things like automatic CI CD by connecting our GitHub repository. Before we do this, let's go ahead and actually expose our application over the internet. To do this, we simply scroll down to the networking tab here, where we can see we have two different panels, a public networking and private networking. Now by default, all services we deploy on railway are deployed under the same internal private network and can communicate between one another on this private network. So we can see here, we can use this internal railway IPv6 IP address to actually communicate to this Nest.js service within our railway deployment. So if we had another service like a microservice architecture, we could communicate to this application with this host name here, and this would work internally. Now this makes building microservices within Railway a very feasible and easy thing to do thanks to this internal DNS mapping. However, we can also expose our application over the internet simply on this public networking tab. We can go ahead and click generate domain, which is going to go ahead and create a test domain for us. Now we can go ahead and open this up in our browser and we now have a production internet URL to click on and expose our application over the internet just like that with under 10 minutes, which is amazing. We see the hello world response from our Nest.js server exposed over this test domain. Now we can also configure this further to set up a custom domain or use a TCP proxy if our application is exposed under a separate port. But in our case, this works just fine. 
Now, if we scroll down, we can see further configuration we can make to our application, including changing the build steps to use a different provider. Node.js runtime is what we want. And we can also override the build command opposed to the default build command it detects in package.json. So we can also scroll down and update the deploy command to do something similar. I actually do want to override this because, well, if we look at our default package.json for Nest.js, Start will actually invoke TypeScript compiler to start our server. In our case, in production mode, we want to actually execute the compiled JavaScript inside of our disk directory, which is what the start prod command here does by executing node directly in disk main. So let's override this command to run npm run start prod instead. So if we go ahead and update this, we then can deploy our changes to railway up top using this deploy button. This is gonna go ahead and rebuild and deploy our application, which we can see has been kicked off here. So we could even click on this and see the latest deployment and follow the build logs as our new application is built and started with the new start prod command instead. So now we have our application up and running. Let's go ahead and make sure we've actually pushed it to a GitHub repository so that we can go ahead and enable automatic CI CD. Whenever we push a change to our repo, it'll automatically rebuild and deploy. So go ahead and head to GitHub to create a new repository if you haven't, so you can push your code up to it. So go ahead and create a new repository here. I'll copy the command to push an existing repo, head back to our repo here, and I'll go ahead and enable my first commit. So we'll push all the changes in this commit and then paste in that line from GitHub to push to our remote origin. So now if we head back to GitHub, we can see we have our Nest.js Railway repo here. So now let's head back to Railway and re-click on our application, go into Settings, and then click on the Connect Repo button to connect our source repo. So firstly, if you haven't configured Railway inside of your GitHub repository, the first step will be click on Configure GitHub App, which will send you to GitHub, where you're going to go ahead and follow the setup to install this Railway app and give it access to all of your repositories. Once that's complete, you can come back here and select the repository that you just pushed up to, and that'll synchronize the repository with Railway. We can go ahead and apply this latest change. We can see by default, it'll use the main branch to check for new commits to. And now whenever we push a new commit to this repository on the main branch, it'll automatically build and redeploy our Nest.js server, which is really great. We now have this automatic CI CD pipeline with basically no work. So let's go ahead and test it out. Well, if we go back to our app service, let's change our get hello world string here to be hello world latest deployment. So we can see that this will be the new response after we push it up and it gets built and deployed. So with this new change to our server, I'll go ahead and add a new commit and push it up to my GitHub repository, which is gonna automatically trigger a new build inside of Railway. We can see here the deployment just got created since it detected the latest commit from our GitHub repository. So go ahead and wait until this latest build and deploy is complete. So now you can see our application has been successfully redeployed. And if I refresh our API on the browser here, you can see the new string text that has been added to our response. So this is great. It means we now have our application deployed in production. We have an automatic CI CD pipeline to push new changes to the server. Now there's some other great features that you can hook into on Railway here automatically. We have the ability to create our own dashboards to monitor our applications. Additionally, one of the best features about Railway is this aggregated logs browser here. So we can actually see all of the logs from our Nest.js applications displayed here inside of this log browser without us having to do anything else, all the logs from our app will automatically be scraped and displayed in here. And then we have the ability to query our logs back in time and filter for more detail. So this makes it super useful to instantly add debugging to our running Nest.js apps without any extra steps. Now in the next part of the lecture, let's go ahead and see how we can add a Postgres database to our Nest.js application deployed in Railway with a one button click deploy and we'll add a, a Docker file to see how Railway automatically will detect it, build the Docker file, and push it with any changes we make. 
let's go ahead and see this in the rest of the lecture. Again, if you want access to the full version of this lecture, which, which includes the Postgres database connection, as well as dockerization, I'll leave a link to my site below. With hundreds of hours of additional exclusive developer content. So thank you so much for watching this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one.